afraid to ask if you're the doctor. Yes, I am. I am a board-certified surgeon. Uh-huh. I'm looking at these. Yeah, this is the field this hospital. Um, this will be set up near the battlefield. I do not go on to the battlefield. I'm uh, too important of a commodity. They bring the patients to me. Um, we would uh, coordinate with the officers where the battle is going to be, and we'd set up according to where we thought would be closer to the battlefield. However, since battles can run as far as 12 miles long, um, sometimes we up to a day's journey to bring them to me. Mm. Um, as an Army surgeon, I deal mostly with uh, the set call in the morning <laughs> and then uh, bullet wounds. Um, these are the bullets before. We're adults here, so I know you guys aren't going to put these in your mm -hmm. mouth. You can pass those around. And <laughs> oh, gosh, they're heavy. Yeah, they're lead. Oh, you can, oh, you actually, they you are, can actually yeah. take your fingernail and, and, and dig into them uh -huh. um, because lead's soft. Um, three things are going to happen when that lead bullet hits you. One, it's going to knock you down. Two, it's going to shatter the, the bone into about 30 different pieces. And then it's going to actually melt into the bone. Ooh. Okay. The next piece I ask that you do not touch because this is after. This actually has bone fragments, muscle, and part of a vein. Oh, my God. Oh, dear me. Okay. So if that has gone into the skin, melted into the bone, you cannot pull it out. It has, there has been amputation. And you're going to cut three to four inches above where the bullet is hit. Obviously, torso and head, you can't do that. So if you get shot here, you cut here, you get shot here, this is coming off. You get shot up in the upper part of the femur, you're going to have to start going into part of the hip. Um, there is uh, anesthesia, chloroform and ether. Uh, ether is very flammable, so if there is a flame present, in other words at night, then you cannot use that. Then you have to use what we call the old-fashioned method. Oh. <laughs> okay. The bullets are about the same size as your trachea, so we would not give a soldier a bullet to bite on, nor would we give them alcohol. Alcohol is an aggregate, plus this is a Victorian era. We do not want to cause the men to uh, sin. Uh, uh, we would use a tourniquet on the, uh, on the limb. Um, then we would make a V incision, top and bottom. Okay. Now we need to actually see where the bullet is, so the hooks that are on the end are going to go into the V and rip the skin off of the bone. I can now see the bone, and I will use whatever saw I have handy. If it's sharp, we can go pretty rapidly. If not, it could take up to three to four minutes to saw through the bone. Because I made a V flap, I'm going to take bandaging, place it over the bone ends, pull the V over that, and then sew it shut. So it shut over oh. the bandaging? Yes, you would, so that you would wasn't sort of bandage. It, it would be removed about a week later. Yes. My so goodness. That was such a temporary. Yeah.